All right, so I want to touch on a topic here that I really don't like the word, and it's called employment issues, because technically we don't employ agents, all right? So I really dislike the use of this word, so please bear with me when they use the word employment. Man, I really don't like that word. The relationship that gets created between a broker, meaning me, as the managing broker or the broker in charge in some states, some states still use the principal broker as the boss, finger quotes, boss, as a better word, all right? And the agent that represents them. In Indiana, we are all brokers. In Florida, they still use salespersons and brokers as well, okay? Indiana uses brokers. Pet peeve, let me jump off into my soapbox. Dude, I still see people that say associate broker. We don't have that in Indiana anymore. There is no associate broker. If you've got associate broker anywhere in your emails, your titles, your Facebook pages, get rid of that. You're a broker, all right? That's the old terminology. We don't use that anymore. And I still see it occasionally. I saw it on an email just literally last week from an older agent that's been around for a number of years who still has associate broker as her title. No such thing, all right? You're a broker. That's your level of license in Indiana. Uh, Florida and other states that still use the bifurcated license still has salesperson and brokers level all right we have a broker and then you can get a endorsement so to speak to become a managing broker some states call it a broker in charge some states now still use principal broker but by statute almost all states define the independent contractor relationship between the managing or principal broker and the agent unless there is a written agreement to the contrary. So what I'm telling you is by default, everybody that works for a managing broker or principal or broker in charge is an independent contractor by state statute, unless they write something different that says you are going to become an employee, all right? The IRS actually considers three, uh, what's the word I wanna look for, job, descriptions as what they call a statutory non-employee. Therefore, they are not subject to withholding. One of those people that the IRS calls out by name is real estate agents, all right? Home health care workers and traveling salesmen. Those by uh, federal statute are non-employees, meaning they are not subject to withholding taxes for any reason, okay? Now, if you hire somebody as an employee and you write a contract to the contrary, they are no longer fit under that statutory non-employee. So yes, withholding taxes would be taken care of. So <clears throat> part of the rules to get paid is that every salesperson or broker that is working with a managing broker above them must have a signed independent contractor agreement and the slang I call that's the ICA in place to get paid from your broker. I have talked to plenty of people that said, well, I never really signed anything with my broker. Well, dude, you better of, because the rule for a agent to get paid is that you must be a licensed, B, uh, have a signed agreement or an independent contractor agreement with your managing broker, so you better have one. That ICA will actually state within it that there is no taxes being withheld and that they, the person is subject to all their own taxes and payable to the IRS. So my ICA says a bunch of stuff like, hey, here's what you promised to do, abide by the rules, or all the laws of the NAR, blah, blah, blah. I will abide by the rules, I'll blah, 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 blah. And then I have a section of things that I will not do. I will not withhold uh, any taxes from your pay. I will not pay any portion of your car insurance. I will not pay any portion of your health insurance. So there is a section in my independent contractor agreement that specifically states things that I will not do. 
that broker or salesperson that is working for a managing broker will be compensated in the form of a commission percentage or a flat fee or hourly. Do not underestimate that that can out, those are all acceptable. Those are all acceptable. Most of us think it's a percent. That's very common, but you could pay them a flat fee or you could pay them an hourly wage. Whatever it is, it better be directed in the ICA or dictated or enumerated or whatever word you want to use, one of your $2 words, the real fancy that says they're going to get paid and they can only get paid and be compensated by their current managing broker. All right. So they being one of you guys working for me, do not get paid a commission at the closing. If you in doubt, I am hopefully everybody in here or listening has had at least one closing. You all understand that you go to the closing and you bring a check back to your managing broker in the name of the company. And then that managing broker will pay you a portion of his commission or her commission based upon whatever the independent contractor has agreed between you when you signed on with that company. So one of the misnomers I hear all the time, and I kind of laugh, and of course I always jump in and say something because you guys all know me. <laughs> I'm a very quiet, soft-spoken individual. People, agents all the time go, well, I got to give the broker half my commission. No, no, you don't. The broker's actually giving you half of his. Why? Because it's the managing broker's commission. It's the broker in charge's commission. And I always say, if you have seen Finding Nemo, remember the Pelicans? <laughs> right, exactly. She, she's obviously got children. She's seen it. Mine, 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 because it's all mine. My client, my agency, my listing, my commission. And when you close and I will allow you to work for me and represent me in this deal, and when you go to closing, you're going to bring me a check that says the modulin group, and then I'm going to pay you a portion of my commission that we agreed upon when you came to my company and signed an independent contractor agreement. All right, cool. We can also have an assistant. I can have an assistant that works for me. Now, here's the cool part. That assistant can be licensed or unlicensed. The only difference is you got to make sure that if you have an unlicensed assistant, that they cannot perform any licensed required activity. They cannot show houses if they are unlicensed. All right. They can maybe be a transaction coordinator, maybe answer your phone, clean the trash cans. But an unlicensed assistant cannot do license required activities. If you have a licensed assistant, they can do that kind of stuff. But here's the kicker. A licensed assistant can only be paid from their managing broker. They cannot be paid by their team lead. Now, there's a lot of you that are giving me funny looks and I understand that because a licensed person can only be attached to one managing broker. And if you are a team lead that works for a managing broker, it's still not your client. It's the managing broker's client and they're the only ones that can hold licenses. So that licensed assistant still license has to be held by the managing broker and that's where they get paid their commission from. Now, as a managing broker, I have to be employed under an agency agreement to earn my commission. That's what we talked about. That is the employment contract called a listing agreement or a buyer's agency agreement. So I, as the managing broker, or if you're in Florida, it's a principal broker, or if you're in North Carolina, it's a broker in charge. They have to be under an employment agreement to get to earn their commission, i.e. the buyer's agency agreement, 
or any of the listing agency agreements. Okay? And I've said it before, number two up there on the screen, that agency agreement is an employment contract. It is not a real estate contract. It is an, an agreement between me as the managing broker and the principal who is employing me. So when you come running into my office and go, hey, I got a new client, that's my mom. No, you do not. I have a new client that is your mother and I'm going to allow you to work with her because you represent me in this deal as the, I am the agent, i.e. the managing broker that the state recognizes as the only one that can have clients. If you want to have your own clients, you have to become your own managing broker and go start your own company. But if you are an agent of me, it is my client not yours. Cool? Well, we're getting close here, so don't fizzle out on me yet. I see some of you standing around, so I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a small break. Uh, if you're at home, obviously, you can take a break as long as you want. You guys in here, come back in 10 minutes.